The rain poured down at the start of the third and final stage of the ladies' tour of Norway. Not that it needed the extra drama. Three marked climbs, a technical closing circuit and a tight battle for the overall lead would give plenty of opportunities for an aggressive GC tussle from start to finish. Ellen van Dijk began 12 seconds down on race leader Mariana Vos. Well, for sure it's raining, as we can see. Um, I think it's going to be a really hard stage. Uh, it's a long stage, uh, 160k, it's not often in, uh, in the women's cycling, so um, yeah, I'm really excited about it. The whole GC uh, is still possible. I mean, Marianne has 12 seconds in advance. It's quite a bit if you look at just seconds, but yeah, it's also nothing if you, uh, if you start attacking. So uh, for sure, that's what we're going to do. We have a lot of racing to do before we get to the circuits, so uh, I think it's it's going to be quite a hard run into the circuits. And um, yeah, of course the circuits will be aggressive like we've seen the past few days. The cobbles, yeah, add, a, add another element, especially on a descent. The attacks came thick and fast from the start, but it was a trio of David Tushlight, Ingrid Moe and Leeson Hawkins that made their break stick at 85 kilometers gone. They gained 2 minutes 40 seconds, with Tushlight winning the special Norway-Sweden border sprint before she was hit by a mechanical problem. The other two pushed on. Having started the day at only 42 seconds back on GC, Tushlight's chances of climbing up the ranks disappeared and she was brought back by the bunch. At the front, Hawkins also began to shake off Norwegian rider Mo. The Australian, who was a novice racer a little more than a year ago, was now leading a women's world tour stage solo and still with a margin of over 2 minutes 20 seconds. Nearing the closing circuits and with Hocking still ahead, another Australian made a play for the win. Rachel Nalen blasting out of the pack. Soon she began to pick off the riders ahead of her, closing in on Moe and moving straight past her, keeping the best lines on the technical circuit to gain 50 seconds. The GC rivals needed to make their decisive move if they were to take the jersey from Voss. But Nayland stayed strong ahead. She finally caught and passed Hockings, who was in a break for 72 kilometers before being swept up. The GC rivals came to the fore. Voss now had 15 seconds on Van Dyke and Jolien Dor, having picked up an intermediate sprint bonus on the way. One and a half laps to go and Van Dyke made an explosive move powering over the cobbles in the manner of the Classics champion that she is, her advantage grew metre by metre. Revisiting the same roads that she won the opening prologue on, she was relentless in her attack. Nalem was caught but stayed in her slipstream. Voss was forced to take up the chase herself, with her nearest rivals sticking solely to her wheel. But she still began to close the gap on her compatriot. When the race entered the final cobble section, Van Dyke's attempt was doomed. Nayland's effort was also coming to an end, and it would be almost altogether for the finish. The crucial absentee from the front being Dor, who began the day in second overall. A daring attack from Linda Willemsen came in the last kilometre, the proficient time trialist being allowed several metres. But with bonus seconds and GC podium places on the line, and the honour of a stage win, Van Dijk surged once more. 2015 champion Megan Guarnier didn't miss a beat, Yellow jersey Voss tucked in behind. A moment's hesitation from Gracie Elvin and their wheels were lost. 100 metres to go, Van Dijk still just ahead, but Guarnier swooped with a ferocious turn of speed. A winning move from the 2016 Women's World Tour champion, her third stage win this season. Also earning her enough bonus time to rise to second on GC. Van Dijk took second on the stage and Voss came third. But Voss could console herself with the ultimate prize, the yellow jersey. Voss also wins the green points jersey, while Janneke Ensing gets the mountains jersey after winning every climb on the final stage. Lisa Klein takes home the youth jersey she's had from the start, and the best Norwegian rider was Suzanne Andersen. Tushlight gets a special jersey for her border sprint, and for her performance on the stage, Hawkins is named most aggressive rider. Team Sunweb is the best team for the race. We came into the final kilometers and I saw myself with a bunch of sprinters and I was like, well, this is not normally where I want to be, but here we go. It was a hard day out there and um, we tried to be pretty aggressive and I, all the girls on Bulls Dolmans contributed. So 
I'm really happy to have pulled it off for them, um, especially the, the stage win and then to move up a little bit in the GC is nice. We knew it would be a hard day today, uh, being in the jersey, uh, and then of course you have to control the race, but my teammate did, a, teammates did a perfect job to keep it in control until the local laps, and then, uh, yeah, still, there was uh, an awful uh, lot of attacks, of course, uh, and you expect that, so that's, uh, yeah, made up for a real good race, and, um, yeah, I, uh, I didn't have to do much until uh, the really, really final part. Confirmation of Stage 3's top 10, with Lotte Lepisto having to settle for fourth in the sprint, ahead of Florcha Mackay and Elvin. In the final GC standings, Voss finishes with a lead of 13 seconds, while Alexis Ryan creeps into the top 10 after Dorr fell 18 places. In the Women's World Tour rankings, Anna van der Breggen still leads, but Kashin Miviadoma has cut her deficit to only 57 points. And in the youth standings, Cecily Utrup-Ludwig now holds an unassailable advantage at the top.